Welcome to the Lake Forest Podcast, a podcast about the lovely city of Lake Forest, featuring topics like local news, sports, music, people, food, and history. My name is Pete, and I'm joined by my co-host, Lake Forest history legend, Arthur Miller. How you doing, Art? I'm just fine. How are you? I'm thankful to have you. But before we start art class, we have a sponsor for the show, Dakota Insurance Group. They've got your back. Why? Because that's what friends are for. Dakota Insurance handles all your residential and commercial insurance needs. Get a quote now at dakotainsurancegroup.com. Okay, one of the goals of the podcast is for our listeners to learn just a little bit more about the Lake Forest area. Well, who better to teach us about Lake Forest history than Lake Forest history legend Arthur Miller? Okay, everyone, take your seats, fold your hands, put them on top of the desk. Art class is about to begin. Art, what you got in store for us? Well, I thought we could talk about Thanksgiving in Lake Forest historically, but in and some of it, what I personally remember, um, which is also historic and <laughs> increasingly so. And, uh, <laughs> and then morph into the Christmas tree lighting ceremony, which is um, a, an interesting development from the 1970s also. So I thought that would be appropriate. And um, we, we um, are fortunate to have a community of a size and everything that where where people can can gather together. Uh, starting out with Thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving is is a New England and you know had, has more sentiment for New England descendants probably than for some other people maybe just because of the old the old and they are and I'll emphasize the word old the old stories about the pilgrims and everything. Um, it's much more complicated now for many people thinking about the, the pilgrims, and it's better to just think about what we're thankful for as Americans, yeah. um, all the blessings we have. Um, the Puritans had their issues. I mean, the, the, the pilgrims had their issues. I'm actually descended from Puritans who had issues with the pilgrims. So um, things got complicated very early. We think we're the only people that have little issues among groups you know <laughs> they had they had serious issues back then even ne- not just with you know each other but with the indians who um considered themselves to be the department of homeland security no anyway so there were these different groups the the people who already lived there when the um the puritans came and the pilgrims came and of course, they were a farming culture from, they were yeomen from England, mostly, who arrived. And they, they knew how to farm. They were very happy to land, to clear the land and farm. This was, of course, not really in the best interest of the hunter-gatherer people. And they began to, this began to be clearer and clearer to them. The first, the first Thanksgiving, when they were just a little bit iffy about everything, and a few of the Indians helped them. That was great for the Pir- for the pilgrims. Um, it got dicier as we went along. And I think um, as a book by um, Philbrick explained called The Mayflower, um, there were real issues that appeared. The, the, he emphasizes a lot King Philip's War, um, which was something that my ancestors just fought in. Um, that was in, in 1675-76. And people, Native Americans who were friendly with, we'll call them Native Americans, were friendly with, you know, settlers in the, in the uh, Connecticut River Valley, for instance, where my ancestors were by that time. They, they were friendly. They got along. But their leaders sort of stirred things up. And um, then friends all of a sudden were against each other. And I know one of my ancestors um, shot one of his friends who was about to shoot him. So that was in 17, 1676 or five. Is that in a Kenosha? No, no. But I'm just saying, we think we have new problems. Yeah, there. it's been going we, on forever. Uh, yeah. It, it was going on back then that there were people who were, they thought they were friends, 
they ended up I mean, personal friends. They ended up being on opposite sides and they were shooting at each other. Um, so we have uh, that, that as we went west, some of those things continued and Lake Forest was founded in the 1850s by people who um, had issues with some of the people in the city, different new groups. These were Presbyterians who were Protestants from mostly from um, British Isles backgrounds and stuff. And so they came here to uh, settle. Um, the Irish had settled in West Lake Forest. It wasn't considered Lake Forest then. It was, it was considered, it was eventually called Everett. There was little corners down there. Um, and they were, they were a separate whole community. They had arrived much earlier. They'd arrived in the 1830s and 40s um, as early settlers. And they were um, pretty well established on their farms. They owned farms all around through here. And it was the it was the Chicago people coming out that were the the Protestants who wanted to um, settle. And they the farmland was already taken. Uh, they wanted to buy the scruffy ground, the irregular ground over by the lake, and that's what they did. Um, th sometimes the the the, the uh, KG old settlers who were then a generation in thought, well, they would only sell their east side land with all the trees on it if guys would also take the um, flat land to the west. So downtown Lake Forest, for instance, wasn't a priority. They wanted the stuff that was east of there, but they had to buy it. <coughs> they had to buy it also. So um, when they when they arrived, they of course these the people who came out here were not like first arrivals in this country. They were lucky people. They were fortunate. Um, the families that bought this, the original lots were rich by standards of the people in, at the time. They'd become rich in a couple of decades. Now we understand that um, now all the people that got rich since the nineties and stuff like that. Um, and people like Elon Musk who makes, uh, a fortune out of you know building a few cars and then eventually building actually a lot of cars. Um, the new fortunes came along and these people knew how to exploit them and they came out here to get away from jealousy in the city, to get away from some of the com uh, the competing groups that they didn't want to fight with. They didn't want to fight with the um, Irish and they didn't want to fight with the Germans. They wanted to keep them their friends in terms of anti-slavery. So. We, they were here, they were very fortunate. They did not serve wine at their dinner tables on Thanksgiving. They, uh, no, no, no. They, they did flat cider, no bubbly cider, no perky cider, just flat cider because they were um, temperance people. They liked to have um, complete temperance in what they had. Some of their difficulties would come up when their servants, the people who came from Ireland or Germany and worked for them, might sneak a little hooch into their place, part of their buildings or something. And that would lead to various um, dust ups, you know. But uh, basically, it was a dry community and stayed dry legally until the 1970s. Things changed in the 1970s. The community began to take on more character. Um, and uh, people celebrated. A lot of people that came here have always come here as the town has grown and it was growing then. Um, they weren't third or fourth generation. Some were, but a lot of people came like I did in the early 70s from someplace else. And so for Thanksgiving, I went back to someplace else. I went around the lake to um, Michigan and had Thanksgiving with family. So for me, Lake Mich um, Thanksgiving in the 70s was schlepping around the lake in heavy traffic with the kids in the back seat saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> Station wagon, no seat belt. That's right. <laughs> are we there yet? So um, it was, you know, it, it's been a, it, it's gotten more complicated as, as cities got bigger, people moved farther from where they'd originally come from. Uh, cramming airports and things like that. But when they got home, they circled, they circled together and had and were thankful for all their 
the things that had been good in their lives, which were mostly um, in the 70s and 80s and everything were, were great. Now, change has always been going on in Lake Forest. We've talked about this in other contexts, but change was vital um, right in the early 70s. The early 70s saw the, um, the end of the Vietnam War, which had been a big divider. Um, people were still kind of licking their wounds over that. Uh, their psyches were a little shaken. Young people, right. it was a difficult time for young people. The draft had been very uh, traumatic and, and divisive and um, that sort of thing. Also, we had something of developing that was um, outside Lake Forest that was huge, which was new um, shopping centers. So um, we had Lakehurst Shopping Center, which is now gone. It's up in, in um, I guess it's Waukegan, still Waukegan, um, west of Waukegan Road, just south of Belvedere. And it was a big enclosed shopping center. You parked your car and you walked around inside. And this was the bee's knees. It had a few uh, stores that were anchor stores, particularly um, that I remember uh, Carson Perry Scott had a very good store that was there. So we went up there. We thought we were in the most modern you could possibly be. Well, then. And, and hold on. And Hawthorne wasn't around then, right? No. no. Okay. Then Hawthorne developed. Hawthorne was west of Lake Forest. There was, there was a Route 60. Route 60 was a two-lane road. It bounced over. It, had, it, it wobbled across the expressway. You went past cows and all kinds of livestock and everything. And you, it was literally going through the country to get to and then across the Des Plaines River. And then you came to this marvelous shining city. It wasn't like Disneyland, but it was this huge mall, you know, and it opened up. And so people crammed the roads going west over to uh, that mall to shop. Well, the, the, the stores in Lake Forest noticed this exodus of their shoppers. Um, and they were trying to think of different strategies, the, the Chamber of Commerce and, and the city to hold those people in because the sales tax, the city got a little sales tax from all that. Um, that was important. Um, people were not shopping as much in town. There had, there were, there was a Woolworth store uh, down where CVS is now in on, on Western Avenue. There were a couple a of lunch counter in there. Yeah, I can't remember the lunch counter. There must have been okay. though. Okay, all right. I don't think I dined there frequently. <laughs> I remember we, it was dry back then. You know, <laughs> you couldn't have <laughs> couldn't have a beer with your with your lunch. Um, so then um, there were a couple of private department stores, or I should say independent department stores that were in the, in the Market Square, Garnett's and Hanson's, I think were two of them. Well, this was trouble for them. You know, there were sh shoe stores, lots of things. And, as P and they had been using the, er a couple decades earlier, they'd been using the North Shoreline to go up and down to shop. So this was, a this was an existential threat for local businesses. And out of this came the tree lighting ceremony. Um, the trees downtown being covered with the branches to make this a very, a, a destination attractive shopping environment. Um, there were, some of those department stores and stuff were replaced by more gift shop kind of places. Um, Marshall Fields was still there and they wanted more business. Marshall Fields was two stories, that end building, they filled the entire building, plus a basement. Um, so it was pretty much of the, that was the most like a department store we had up into through the through the uh, 20th century. Um, every, everybody had complaints about it, but a lot of stuff was there and people bought it. Um, so the tree lighting ceremony kicked off. They turned on the lights all at once and it started the Christmas season. And it was to be focused on people coming to Market Square. So they would bring in a Santa Claus. They would have carolers. They would do various kinds of what the French refer to as animation or excitement somehow built into, you know, a sort of a pseudo event that would attract people into town with their families, with their kids to go. And there was always a toy store. We don't have a toy store anymore. 
the last toy store died oh, less than a decade ago, but it was um, it was a good toy store. Uh, we got Sage Explorers. That's kind of well, like an edgy. Yeah, but it was edgy. right in my square. And it was yeah. a more, bigger scale. They Got it, they, got it, got it. The, the last thing we bought in that toy store, which was in the t North Tower at the base, the, we use Sage Explorers a lot for our grandkids. But yeah. what they did was they would buy the stuff you could buy on the internet and they would assemble it for you and sell it for a third more. So the last thing I bought was the last American Flyer uh, car, you know, probably about eight years ago. And yeah. the guy said, well, you know, you could buy this on the internet. And I said, yeah, I could, except you put it together and I didn't have to do that. And that was worth a third of the price to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not to do that. So a lot of what was in the stores and is still in the stores is the value added. It's the service and the stores that are successful in Lake Forest and they're coming back a lot of them I mean Smith's men's store uh, downtown the Lake Forest uh, shop for women um, different gift shops and things the bootery they offer service they take care of the customer and they, uh, wrap the presents and all that the yeah. presents you know you, it, it, you go to the to the mall or something and if you right. find a clerk. if you if you find a clerk i'll use that one yeah right so what they offer is service it's you know those are the successful businesses in lake forest to a, a relatively affluent clientele offer and a busy clientele people who've got stuff to do places to go things to do they offer them the service of getting things organized for them whether it's flower arrangements or uh, all these kind of things, they do that for them. The, the ship and the pack and ship places, you could just bring your stuffola to the pack and ship, you know, that's um, right. a little bit over there by the uh, just south of, of Westminster and the, and the lantern. And you just bring it in, it's all cobbled together, and they'll put it in boxes for you and everything. That That's worth it. So, that was the origin of those of the downtown, the really pseudo event, but tree lighting ceremony, which was to re-highlight the value for all of us of having a good central strong business district here, central district, and everybody patronizing it, taking care of it, considering it to be their own. Many of us make a real effort to spend in and to shop local, um, which is hugely valuable for our taxes, keeps our property taxes down if we buy things here instead of buy somewhere else. It also saves us the trouble of driving out to someplace else to get things done. Also, Hawthorne, it actually has peaked. It was a bigger outfit earlier. Hawthorne was a, a bigger outfit. You can now use Amazon, but again, Amazon will deliver this stuff to you, but then there is the book written by a non-English speaker that tells you how to put it together, um, which, you know, at three o'clock on Christmas morning, you find out the instructions don't work or some of the parts aren't there. You're missing the last part. Yeah. And you have to get it ready for your kids. And you're thinking, how can I put this together? How can I make it work? You don't have to do that. You know, if you're in Lake Forest, they'll, they'll fix things for you. So, um, yeah, Sage Explorers, if they ever expand, they could go into those kind of things that are more tricky to, to put together. Um, place on Bank Lane, uh, Wired on Bank Lane, they'll hook up your Christmas new TV and stuff for you. Right, so, right. So the, the tree lighting ceremony was it had a commercial use, a community building use after all the difficulties of the 60s and everything. Also, um, the city took leadership. There was the train station, the, the high school choir was there to sing, um, chorus was there to sing and lead in Christmas carols. Everybody sang, there was different kinds of things. You'd go to the stores, you'd have, people had their dogs to visit and stuff. So uh, Thanksgiving is being thankful for our community. There have been efforts to build that community, integrate new people. The Christmas lighting ceremony helps bring new people into the town and into the traditions, everybody goes uptown and does it, along with a few other 
similar things downtown, you know, but this is one of the, this might be the biggest of the downtown things, along with the um, art fair at Labor Day, um, Lake Forest Day, which is, you know, okay, but not huge in the daytime. Right. Um, so this is really probably the biggest and long lasting traditions. And um, anybody who misses it, uh, it's too bad. Uh, they, so, they have pins who, that are different. Uh, school, was, school Walker was telling me uh, uh, about it. Uh, the, the mayor comes in and turns it on. Is that uh, true? Yeah, the mayor does it. Um, they have different people who work come with the mayor. One year when I was president of the Ragdale Foundation, which is up on Green Bay Road, and they have poets and writers come. I actually yeah. read, a sh I read a short poem. Um, it was maybe a one stanza too long. And uh, I could <laughs> tell the crowd was waiting for me to get off the mic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> was it cold? Uh, yeah, it's always chilly. I mean, there very rarely has it been warm. On yeah, this. yeah. Yeah, and then and they say you can get cider over there or something. I, you know, there's always have... something. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know that, you know, I'm not sure why they don't have food trucks, you know, because that would be, it would work, you know, it would be, um, that, that would be too vibrant. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 but I mean, people want to, you know, people come, they want to have something. If it's been, you know, like the it's late afternoon, they might want a little snack or something too. Mm -hmm. They get cider or hot chocolate, something like that. Donuts, typically. So, so, so the seventies is when the tree lighting happened, right? Do you, what it happened started, like before that? Anything? Uh, before that, they didn't. Everybody was. They had a captive audience. See, um, there was no mall. There was just cows and pigs out at um, Hawthorne. That was a. I think it was kind of like a little fun fair out there, farm, fun farm. Um, there was well, Lake, Lake Forest. Well, sorry to keep interrupting. It's just I just had <laughs> Scoo and I were talking about this and uh, yeah. Lake Forest was a destination. Now it seems like people are they spend all the money on their homes here and they go somewhere else for a vacation to, to <laughs> leave, you know. Well, yes, uh, for Thanksgiving, you know, yes, people are more taking that week and going someplace. Yeah, uh, that depends. Uh, but I think you're right. A lot of people go to Florida or if they, a lot of people live in Lake Forest have one or two other places that they go. Um, and so they may do that. Uh, they having to pass through an airport in COVID times has been somewhat oh. of a deterrent. Um, you know, but, uh, it's, it, I think a lot of people do they do go away and if they don't go away they've got people coming in that's the other yeah. thing so you have a lot of family members coming into lake forest to be with people um that's what that's what ours is going to be um we're going to uh, our relatives and they have all this stuff going on um so maybe you know over the holidays too i mean yes there are people go away have been going away from lake forest in the cold weather yeah. since at least the um 1880s <laughs> no there's they yeah. were they uh, they were starting to invest in florida by then um developing real estate property down there pasadena was a big um this it was a big destination for lake foresters and then later santa barbara uh, they would take the railroads out they would take them a couple of days but it, you know by that time trains were very comfortable yeah. and you could eat you know with pullman cars you could eat in a restaurant you'd have a nice little room at um it was kind of fun they didn't mind doing it so um people uh, people have been doing it for 130 years at least going away for definitely not some, unique so, yeah no some are all of the winter now it's it's faster once you're on the plane. It's not necessarily faster after you get off the plane or before you get on the plane. Um, that is kind of more like my ancestors, my, some of my ancestors that came on, came through Ellis Island, you know, where you, 
had to prove that you were healthy and um, were going to be a good citizen, you know. And right. now we have the TSA that's kind of like the immigration people were at Ellis Island. Um, so <laughs> some of the <laughs> joy of flying has yeah. um, gone away. But then the other people, the, a lot of people take, have these partial uh, flight plans and stuff like that. So that gets around that too. The special, you know, going to the special fields and special airline, air, airports for, you know, private jets, that sort of thing. I think that's well, probably a lot. Well, I saw, I saw the tree in Market Square. It looks like a great tree, red ribbons Ooh. on. Huge. That's a, that's a big one. Do you know where they get it from? Somebody probably donates it uh, from around here. That'd be, that'd be interesting. I, sometimes, I think sometimes they do. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, I've known people who de dedicate, you know, over, get it's overgrown in your yard. Yeah. And then, or a new person buys it and said, they haven't taken care of this landscape for, you know, like 30 years. I'm getting rid of that tree. And okay. so that, yes, that has been an often a source. I don't know if it works every year. But generally, um, a lot of people in town have given their tree, given trees. And of course, then they can probably deduct it. I don't know. We think. I don't know. It's big. But uh, yeah, I mean, because we have so many tree, you know, like fir trees in town that get overgrown. Uh, they just take over the lot, you know. And so people right. want to get. Yep, yep, yep. So, and then, it, but it's, it's, it's giving lots of people work to put together all those lights and get those lights organized, keep them running. Those um, poor guys <laughs> in the, in the buckets, they've been up there for, Oh my goodness. Well, it was worse before the buckets. Yeah. <laughs> Ladder. Ladder. <laughs> you think your job's rough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, for the city, it's a challenge because it is a big job to organize it every year, but it, it brings people together. It creates a sense of community. It is. It makes Lake Forest a destination for communities around. Um, you know, it, it contributes to the Deer Path Inn and everything. So it keeps the sort of economic engine running and it keeps the social engine running where people see each other and recognize each other. And even if they don't know one another, they, they pretty much know who's Lake Forest and who's visiting, you know. It's amazing. And there's your history of Thanksgiving in Lake Forest, the tree lighting, a little bit on Thanksgiving itself. Uh, yeah. Can't, can't wait for uh, Christmas. Or can you say Christmas anymore? Well, we, we can say holidays. <laughs> we can say holidays. Okay. Art, right, thank, thank you again for making me just a little bit smarter on Lake Forest history. It's fun to talk about it. Thank you. Oh, outstanding. Thanks for listening to the Lake Forest Podcast. Please give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and smash that like button on Facebook, Instagram, and follow us on Twitter. Let us know what you'd like to hear about on the upcoming shows. Again, I'm Pete and can be reached at Pete at LakeForestPodcast.com. The link will be in the podcast notes. We'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. Oh, we got a few here. Art, we have Reverend Luke Back. From the I Church of the Church Good. of the Holy Spirit, we have Elizabeth B, Matt A, and Costa. Welcome aboard, everybody! On behalf of my co-host Arthur Miller, we thank you for listening. Our class is now over. Cue the band.
I'm, I'm thankful to see Arthur Miller. 